Good morning. So today's video is about what you need to be a software engineer or a software developer in South Africa. Based on my limited experience as a junior software developer for the last couple of months for my vacation work for the local IoT startup that I'm busy working for and uh, kind of continuing work with them on a semi-permanent basis now during the last semester. And so take it with a grain of salt. But what I've experienced so far has been really interesting because it's obviously not a good time to look for a job. COVID uh, is not a good time to be looking for a job, especially when you're underqualified. And I actually applied for my vacation work to about 30, 35 different companies, sending out emails, applying to, through job boards, applying uh, on individual companies, portals and that, applying for positions. And I only got one positive, this company that I'm working at now, which is a great company and I'm having a great time working there and I've learned so much, but that's besides the point. Uh, straight off the bat, I got one positive and like 35 negatives. Often I didn't get any replies at all. And this is obviously because I'm not finished my degree yet, I'm not properly qualified yet, and I'm way underqualified for a lot of the positions I applied for. But just wanted to put that at the beginning of the video so you have a sense of scale as to how, how easy it is to get a job. Obviously I'm underqualified. If I had finished my degree and had a bit more experience, it would have been a lot easier. Mitch from the future here is just editing this video quickly. I wanted to add in a point here. Also, I've found that a lot of the big companies in South Africa that employ software engineers and computer science and computer engineering graduates do so through the use of recruiters. So recruitment agencies and that, that handle the interactions and CVs and that with prospective uh, employees and then send those onwards to big companies and that who they think is a good fit maybe for the company and they organize interviews and that. Because I contacted one of the recruitment agencies and they said, sorry, we only place full-time positions because I was looking for back work at the time. And so I think a lot of the big companies actually place people via the recruitment agencies and not the companies direct. So that's also something to keep in mind when you're trying to get a job or when you're looking at getting a job in the industry. But it was really interesting because I, I sent out a lot of those emails and that, and I don't have any work experience. And so I sent out, I'll show you my exact CV that I sent also so that you can see. I sent out this CV here. And so basically just uh, my name, my contact details, some technical proficiencies, some of the technologies I've worked with in the past, including heavily JavaScript, C++, Java, uh, Git, REST, assembly from Varsity, some Python from Varsity, microcontrollers from Varsity, some of the other stuff that I've learned in my own time. Uh, and then basically what I did was I did a list of projects that I've worked on, basically my personal website showcasing the technologies and the stack that I used to create that and get it up and running. The respiration detection system, that was one of the Varsity projects we did last year. Uh, instead of the robot car, we built that kind of like ventilator system using the PIC and the assembly language. And so that was quite a, a bare bones hardware uh, technical project. And so I thought that would be maybe uh, it would look cool to prospective employers. And then basically I put on my YouTube channel my degree, uh, high school achievements, and just some skills that I got. So like overall, not a very impressive resume uh, if you, you take software engineering and software development as a whole. Like I didn't have many skills there, I didn't have any AWS, I didn't have any websites or any extra projects that I built. So I'm trying to work on my portfolio a lot more um, for the future. But yeah, it's just something I thought I'd share with you. My experience with getting a job was was really interesting because I went for my interview and they really <laughs> they really enjoyed uh, me talking about the projects that I've done. And I've, I've seen that on the internet before, that you need to have a portfolio of projects that you've done and that you've built in your own time, showcasing the technologies and the skills that you have and how you can use that to help a, a, a employee to achieve their own aims and achieve their goals. And so I, I did that, I built a, together a little bit of a portfolio, but then also I took, uh, this is one of my hot tips for getting a, a job, is to take props with. I took one of the um, yeah, boards we used for EPR, for our project, what was it? It was a, I took an ESP32 board with me. That's this little microprocessor here that I used for um, my EPR project. Remember, I did a whole video about it last year. And they were really impressed because one of the boards that they use in the development of their own IoT sensors and that is the ESP32. And so by just showing it in the interview, they didn't even ask me any questions about it. They were really impressed that I'd worked with it and that I knew uh, the industry that they worked in. And particularly in my interview, we talked a lot about the industry and stuff that I haven't even worked on, but stuff that I was able to communicate about and able to talk about and discuss and debate with them. Uh, I think that was quite instrumental in them hiring me. But then in particular, from my opinion of the job market in South Africa as a whole, I obviously haven't worked that much, 
But from what I've seen on the job boards and spending a lot of time surrounded by people who haven't, uh, sorry, people who have already graduated varsity and people who do work in the industry, one of my friends who has worked in the industry for 10, 15 years has said to me often, Mitch, it's not what skills you know, it's not what languages you know, it's how quickly you can pick up new ones and how quickly you can adapt your way of thinking and that's to solve new problems and to learn a new tech stack quickly and to innovate. And that's really well and good. And of course, coming from Varsity, I know how to learn. And all we do at Varsity is learn new things. But then I, you know, I wanted to ask the question, what exact skills should one learn to get an entry level job in South Africa? What exact um, programming languages and what exact projects should I build if I want to get a job? Because obviously for most of us coming out of Varsity, the objective is just to get a job and earn as much money at first as possible to settle down, get some security, and then you know, really pursue our passions afterwards. And so what I have done for several months now is look at the job boards for South Africa. So I think if you just Google jobs, uh, they have like a list of all the jobs that are available in South Africa. There's a couple of other classified websites. But going through there is very interesting, and I'll put it here on the side of the screen, but it's very interesting in seeing what the type of jobs are in South Africa for software engineering and software development, and what the industry is looking for, basically, what kind of skills and development they're looking for. And so looking through, I saw a lot of um, artificial intelligence and machine learning work, especially for, I saw Luna was advertising there. Lots of front-end framework development. I think lots of companies are obviously building web-based tools and web-based platforms, and those need a front-end framework. So things like Angular and React, uh, I saw no view jobs, view is the framework I'm busy learning, but that's besides the point. They're all very similar at the end of the day. Lots of front-end framework jobs, lots of back-end jobs in, surprisingly, PHP, and Java, and what's the other one? What's Microsoft's one? C Sharp, lots of C Sharp jobs because that's an industry grade, enterprise level software package. Um, and so yeah, go through the, the job boards there and have a look at all the technologies, all the skills and that, that they're looking for. Obviously, also keep in mind that those companies post their, their absolute best case candidate, what they would like to have, uh, what their dream candidate is and what skills they have. No, no person is going to be able to satisfy every one of their requirements and the advice that I got was just to apply for lots of things, even if you're underqualified for it, because you might get an interview, you might go in and you might have a fit for that role or a similar role in the company. Uh, just based on your current skill set and your current technologies that you know. And so that's what I did and that was my experience and it's been really positive so far. And I'm really looking forward to working in the software industry and computers and computer science in future because it's such a big industry and with NFTs and blockchain and artificial intelligence, I just finished an artificial intelligence Udemy course this morning, there's so much opportunity and the world is going digital and it's going to be such a cool industry and career to have. And so I'm really excited for that. And I'm keen to finish my computer engineering degree at the end of next year and then go out and you know just work in the industry, work in, uh, in that kind of career and I'm really excited for that. Also, one of the big things people always ask me, uh, I made a video about it recently, but you know the difference between computer engineering and computer science and what uh, a software developer needs in order to get a job. And if you go and look at the job boards again, um, there, there are lots of different jobs require different things. Some of them want computer science, some of them want computer engineering graduates, some of them want minimum two or three years of experience in that. And so, I don't know, having not had a lot of experience and not a lot of job experience, I can't really answer that question. But having asked my friend who worked in the, who's been working in the industry for 10 to 15 years, he also said that, you know, once again, those job qualifications that they want you to have are a best case scenario. That's what they want if they had their, their best pick, you know, if life was perfect and they could choose the exact candidate they wanted, they would have a computer science graduate with three to four years experience in the framework they're using. But it's far more important to show that you can learn new skills fast, that you can build a portfolio, that you can problem solve, that you can learn skills fast for them and then showcase that in your interview and showcase that skill set. And then that's probably more important than your ultimate graduation, uh, what your certificate says for your university or technical qualification, which are yeah, obviously computer science and computer engineering or some kind of thing related to coding or programming is um, desirable. So yeah, those are my top tips and my thoughts just based on my limited experience on how to get a software development job or a software engineering job in South Africa. I suppose it applies to the rest of the world. So yeah. Learn lots of skills and technologies, learn how to learn, build yourself a portfolio based on those technologies, make yourself a nice CV, take a prop with to the interview, obviously interview well, and then yeah, just apply to lots and lots of positions. Uh, kind of throw your net out wide and see what opportunities come your way. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and cheers.